Hello everyone and welcome to my second video. Um, and it's funny because second video, but I think I've decided on a name. I'm going to go with Mason the Brock Henderson. That is subject to change, so just keep calling me Mason if you want to. Um, so, first steps uh, review was about Gotham. Monday nights, two shows. Uh, Gotham first, followed by Fargo. Now, I still have yet to get around to seeing the movie. I've heard several good things about it. I've seen the first season of Fargo, which was incredible. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and do a quick recap of that. Which, surprisingly, isn't needed. But anyway, uh, starring Martin Freeman, Billy Bob Thornton, two incredible actors. And they really nailed performances in this. Uh, if you haven't seen the movie either, basically what it's about is it's based in a city... Fargo, Minnesota, and so of course they're all talking in Minnesota, don't you know, and it's just, it, that in itself is funny, listening to them talk like that, uh, especially Martin Freeman knowing that he's British and he he pulls it off very well, but basically it, the whole uh, series, first season, was about Martin Freeman, uh, he kills his wife, and uh, Billy Bob Thornton's character just kind of he's just a total badass uh, and he just steps in and kind of helps him out a bit um, the cop comes in like the, the sheriff of the town and sees the, his dead wife in the basement and Billy Bob Thornton's character comes in shotguns him to death uh, and from there it's just I mean it's kind of a, a crime kind of drama uh, but it's very much a dark comedy uh, a lot of dark humor, very, very dark humor sometimes. Uh, but it, it is fun to really get caught up in characters, and Martin Freeman's character is one of those characters that you can really kind of connect with, uh, especially if you're like me, uh, going through high school and stuff, and not really being that popular, and kind of being the butt of a lot of jokes. And that's what Martin Freeman's character was. And he, after the whole thing with his wife and the cop, like he's seen as a victim. And so he kind of gets away with killing his wife. And uh, Billy Bob Thornton's character obviously gets away with killing the sheriff. And he's kind of on the run, but kind of not, because he's just so cool about everything that it's just like, they're not going to catch me. Um... And, you know, there are some guys that come, they're like hitmen for the mafia, and they come to take care of business, and, you know, it connects with the mafia. Uh, I can't remember what city they were in. But it was just, it was a very interesting story, and I'm, I'm not going to give too much away if you haven't seen it, because it really is a great show. And uh, where it goes is really clever, what they did, especially, it was only ten episodes long. And what they did in those 10 episodes is rather incredible. Um, and they did a lot of paying homage to the movie Fargo. Um, and, you know, they actually had the Coen brothers help out a bit, I believe, in writing the show. So, very good first season. Um, a lot of very clever writing, very clever story. Um, but there are two characters. There was the main cop, um, can't remember the actress's name right now, but her character's name was Molly, and uh, she actually fell in love with uh, Tom Hanks's son, I believe, Colin Hanks. Uh, he he played another like just goofy cop that was terrible as a, at his job, um, but they kind of had a little romance. Uh, but the the woman cop her name was Molly. She was very good at her job, and they showed her dad a bit. He was uh, used to be a cop, but he was working in a diner, and she would go to him for like help on a case and stuff because he's a very smart guy um, but this second season of Fargo and this is one of the great things about it they're going back in time to when Molly's dad was a cop and she was like she, in the show I think she's seven or eight at this point and so it you don't even have to see the first season to see the second season because they're doing a completely different story and you know, there are upsides and downsides to it. On the upside, 
you know, like I said, you don't have to see the first season. You can just watch it, and that's it. Um, and that's you know, that's very good for viewership. If you want to get more people to watch it, it has nothing to do with the first season. So if you haven't seen it, oh well, come watch. Um, but then again, you don't really get to play off of the first season much. And it looks like it's going to be ten episodes again, I believe. Uh, not entirely sure. So... You know, it, it is hard to start up a story from scratch and do it in ten episodes, but they did it with the first season, so I'm not entirely worried about that. But that can be seen as you know, something they have to worry about. But we'll see where it goes. Uh, two episodes in right now. Um, they have, once again, they have a very good cast. Uh, they have, uh, what's his name? Ted Danson playing um, kind of the... Uh, Molly's grandfather, in a sense, um, it's her mother's dad, so there's a lot of, you know, chemistry there, because he's the, like, the local sheriff of this town, and Molly's dad, uh, I want to say his name is Lou, I'm probably, I may be getting that wrong, I feel like his name is Lou, but it, her dad is, like, he, he is a state trooper, so he, you know, bigger picture cop, and her grandfather is a smaller picture cop. Um, but they they got in a good cast of characters for this one. Uh, since I'm a Burn Notice fan, love seeing Jeffrey Donovan, the uh, guy that played Michael. He's kind of like this. They're not really the mafia. They're like a local, not, not even really a gang, but they're family run business, uh, doing a lot of the dirty stuff in this. Uh, little county, um, I think it's Rock County, and he's like the oldest son, and he's kind of the the hard hitter of the family, I guess, because he's the one that gets stuff done. And then they also have Bruce Campbell, which everybody loves Bruce Campbell, but he's gonna going to play uh, Ronald Reagan, which I haven't seen him yet. But so those two really got me excited for this season. Um, Kirsten Dunst is the, they don't really have a main character uh, for this show. She, her and her husband, played by Jesse Palmer, they, they're kind of the main characters, I guess, um, if you don't count the cops and stuff. But they're the ones that kind of, they're the unassuming ones that get caught up in this whole mess, I guess. Um... And when I saw her name, uh, Kirsten Dunst, when I saw her name on it, I was a little worried. But then I had to remember that it was more Mary Jane in Spider-Man movies that I didn't like. Her acting wasn't bad. Um, so it was more the way her character was written. So I had to put my feelings about Mary Jane from the Spider-Man movies aside. And so far she's doing okay. Uh, the first episode kind of starts off with... You know, you're learning a bit about this family, um, where Jeffrey Donovan is the the oldest son, and they're very much a crime family. You know, like a they feel like a mafia in and of themselves. Um, and I don't really the other two sons look familiar, but I can't remember where I've seen them from. And honestly, I can't start spouting out actors' names. I wish I had like a little list. I should probably do that. Um, of people who's playing who, but the uh, the mom and the father are very much, you know, they, they feel like the leader of a crime family. Um, no Italian accents though, so not the mafia. Um, but you, you kind of get a little bit of insight into them and how they feel about stuff. And then the youngest son, who he's he looks very weaselly, uh, you can tell that he's the, the screw up of the family. Um, he owes money, he gambling addiction, all that stuff. Um, he talks with this guy who apparently is kind of the idea guy. Uh, and they're, they're friends and they're talking about like this deal that could make them a ton of money, which he desperately needs at this point. Um, but they need... I, it was hard for me to tell, but it sounded like they needed the approval of a judge. 
I'm not sure whether one of them had like a warrant or if they needed like a business license or if they needed something to go through it. They probably said it and I just, I space out sometimes. Um, but what was apparent was they needed the approval of this woman judge um, from North Dakota. And, you know, he, the, the son said that he was going to go get it done. And so he goes to find this judge and he goes and it's like a, a Waffle Hut, so pretty much an older older version of Waffle House. And he goes in there to you know, get her to release whatever they're trying to do. Um, I don't I don't think it's that important what they were trying to get her to do. What is important is he need uh, the approval of a judge for something. But anyway, you can just tell she's kind of like this. I'm not gonna take any crap type of uh, judge. She, as soon as he um, says that he needs her to do whatever, she starts talking about Job um, and how Satan was, you know, trying to get God to, you know, hey, let me have him. And God's like, go ahead. And Job didn't change his mind, even though Satan did all this stuff. She's like, if Job wouldn't change his mind, what makes you think you can change mine? And it was just, it, it's typical of. Uh, kind of a Fargo line, just this kind of dang, like she's got she's got some balls, um, and of course this pisses off the little Weasley guy, and he's like, no, you don't understand, I need this, and then she pulls out a can of bug spray, and she's like, I'm gonna squash you like the bug you are, and I'm just like, look, lady, I appreciate the fact that you are just it's cracking me up right now, but he's kind of serious. And sure enough, like, he is really, like, up in her face, and she sprays him with the bug spray, pulls out a gun. She's like, oh, crap. Gets shot in the shoulder. The uh, the cook comes out of the kitchen and about to hit him with the pan. He shoots him twice. And then the waitress is, like, trying to want to run away. He shoots her. And then the judge, like, stands up like this freaking zombie. <laughs> she, she was so tall. Um, I wish I knew the actress's name because she, she was only in it for one episode, but man, she really left the impression. And she just like stands up behind him, like grabs him butter knife and sticks in his back. And so he turns around, finish her, finishes her off, and has to like get the knife out of his back. Um, and when he finally does, he looks and sees that the waitress is still alive. And uh, she's walked out of the diner and is heading, like, away from it. And, of course, it's set in Minnesota, so there's a bunch of snow everywhere. And uh, he finally catches up to her and, you know, one shot to the back of the head. Typical Fargo, you know, brains everywhere. They, they love making heads explode, um, playing with blood. It's FX, so they pull no punches. Um, but then, like, he's sitting... It was it was kind of bizarre at this point. Like I'm not sure what exactly was going through his mind, but after he shot her, he kind of he had like a bunch of money that he'd stolen from the uh, register, and it looked like a UFO or a plane of some sort, maybe a helicopter. But he was like staring at the light, and then it flew off, and then he gets hit by a car. Um, and by the end of the episode. You know, you find out that it was Kirsten Dunst's character who hit him with the car. And it, it was very bizarre, and one of the reasons why I, you know, I I kind of had to put aside the Mary Jane aspect, like I said. Because she actually did a very good job of playing, like, a just a dumb blonde um, from those times, I guess. Uh, I know that sounds kind of sexist or whatever, but, I mean... She, if you watch some of those older movies and like the the women that are all like up here, and you know, all the ways up in the clouds, like they're just living out of reality. That's kind of how she was. She was like sitting there talking to her husband, you know, talking about, you know, oh, I I have this seminar that I want to go to. And he's like, well, I don't know how much money does it cost. And you're just having a typical family dinner. And next thing you know, like you're hearing crashing, and she's like sitting there trying to make him ignore it. She's like. Oh, honey, what what how's work today? And I'm like, what's going? And so he 
goes into the garage, sees the hole in the windshield and all the blood where she had hit uh, the younger son of this crime family. And it turns out he was still alive, which... <laughs> I, I want to know how he survived that, because his head went straight through the windshield. Um, and he had a lot of blood coming out of him. And the fact that she drove all the way home with him in her windshield kind of freaks me out. But anyway, so you hear like thumping coming from this hallway off to the side of the, you know, it's like an in-house garage. And uh, so uh, Jesse Palmer's character pulls out like a flashlight and it's not working. And so you start to see kind of the, the creep factor that this show loves to bring. Because um, he's the, the younger son sitting there at the end of the hallway and you hear him hitting and you can kind of see like a shadowy figure. And like every time he hits the flashlight, it like shines for a second, and it, it's like a scary movie watching. Like he's like, you can barely see him move before the flashlight goes off again. And it's just very well done scene. Um, and so the the younger son goes to attack Jesse Palmer's character, um, and they end up fighting for a bit. And then I think his name was Ed. Ed something. But Ed ends up killing the younger son, and they stick him into the freezer. And it was just kind of like a... This all could have been solved if you just hadn't driven off after you hit him with your car. But instead, you brought him home, which made it a hit and run. And then you didn't check to see if he was alive or dead. And so he attacks your husband, and then your husband kills him, which makes it manslaughter. Something. It was self-defense, because the guy was trying to kill him. But then you hide the body, which all of a sudden makes it an actual crime. And it's just, you know, very similar to the first season, how it was just this unassuming couple who now they're in the middle of this crime because they were too dumb to take care of the problem before it arose. So anyway, that was the first episode. Um, very much like the first season in that it starts off with kind of a shocking, like, I don't even know the word. It's not a battle. It's not a war. But it's it's like a fight scene, I guess, where you know guns are going off, blood's flowing. Um, but that's it. You know, like the story is still progressing, and even to the second episode, the story is still progressing. Like we still have not hit that moment in the series yet, because the first season started off like, holy crap, what is this show about? Like, even watching the previews, you know, we saw Martin Freeman's name in the previews, we saw Billy Bob Thornton's name. Like, what is this show about? And my, my mom and stepdad had seen Fargo, so they were interested in seeing it. And from the previews, I was like, I don't know what this show is about. And so we started watching it, and the first few episodes were kind of building up into the story. And then they hit, like, the fourth episode, I think, where the action started to come in. It just, it really stepped it up. Because um, it went from just like this drama, uh, crime drama show that had dark comedy in it to a, a thriller, almost. Um, and that's kind of how this show feels. Like it has the elements of dark comedy in it still. Um, you still still love to hear the, the Minnesota accents. Jeffrey Donovan, I knew, could do it because he, in Burn Notice he's played all these different characters as Michael Weston, so I was excited to see him uh, doing a Minnesota accent. Um, but the second episode really just kind of furthers the story a bit more. Uh, they're trying to find out more about what happened at the diner. Um, Lou and Ted Danson's character, um, oh yeah, Ted Danson plays Molly's grandfather. Don't know why I didn't think to mention that. Um, but you, you see a bit more of their kind of relationship as son-in-law, father-in-law. Uh, both cops, both military men. They have an interesting little backstory about, you know, how Lou saw the look on this one guy's face in the diner, the cook's face. It was the same look that he saw on this other guy. Um, and, you know, it... It's interesting backstory stuff. It really is interesting. Uh, it's not 
chiller. It's not, you know, it's not boring. But at the same time, it's not like when you're when you're watching it right in the moment, you're kind of sitting there like, okay, yeah, come on. But later, you know, once you actually get into it, you start to realize some of the stuff is actually important and ties in later. Um, so you're you're still keeping it in your mind, but at the moment you're like, come on, let's get going. I want to get into this. Um, but you have a uh, the crime family with uh, Jeffrey Donovan, the two other sons, the mother and the father. The father had a stroke at the end of the first episode, so they're kind of dealing with the backlash of that because this uh, really does feel like the mafia. Um, but there's this group coming out of Kansas City. They're like a huge organization. They want to buy them out, but still let them have control of the Minnesota area as far as the crime goes. So they come and talk to the mother about it. The mother's thinking about it because it's a lot of money involved. The oldest son is like, you know, like you you, told, you sent the packing, right? Um, and of course the mother, you know, she's undecided, but the oldest son is like, but I'm in charge because he doesn't want a woman to be in charge. Um, again, one of the great things about it is because it's back in time. Um, like, the whole Watergate scandal just happened. So, it's like, it, you feel it whenever s stuff like that is said. You know, it's like, but you're a woman. And, of course, we don't deal with that much right now. So, it is interesting to kind of have that aspect. And you're like, oh, yeah, this is set back in time. Um, let's see. So, you have a bit more of them. Um... Jeffrey Donovan's character has like a an Indian friend, I guess. Um, like he he looks like you know Tonto from The Lone Ranger. Uh, he very much still got the Indian garb. They have that one funny scene that uh, was shown in the previews with the guy in the uh, the 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 barn, and Jeffrey Donovan's talking to him. He's like, "Is hey, are you listening to me? Hey, is he listening to me?" He's like, "He's dead. He cut off his ears." You know, more dark comedy. Um, but they're they're trying to find the younger son. Don't know that he's dead yet. Uh, in fact, nobody really knows that he's dead because Kirsten Dunn's character took him home <laughs> with her. Um, so you know, you got that going on. You've got, like I said, Ted Danson and Lou, both trying to figure out what happened at the diner. Uh, Lou actually said it was a, a local matter, so he left it to De Ted Danson's character. And uh, the Rock County, I think it's Rock County, the sheriff department there. Um, but now he's questioning, he's like, I think there's more to it. I, you know, the, the judge came from North Dakota, so, you know, it's, it's uh, in between state lines, and, you know, it, it may be a state matter. So, you know, you got them at the bar. You got a. Uh, he actually. They they were taken. Uh, what's her name? Uh, Molly. He and his wife, who is the wife from How I Met Your Mother, the the mom. As soon as me and my mom were watching it, and uh, as soon as we saw her, I looked at her and she's like, Mason, that's. I'm like, yeah, I know. What is she doing here? Um. Because, you know, you. You'd recognize her anywhere. She's got such a unique look. Um, and of course, if you haven't seen How I Met Your Mother, oh. uh, if you haven't, you really get on Netflix right now. Watch it after you're done with my video. Um, but anyway, so you've got Lou and the wife taking Molly somewhere. Um, there's kind of a bizarre scene where the wife was like sitting in this hospital room and she was talking about this specialist. So I don't know where that's going. Um, it, it kind of was left shrouded in a mystery. But anyway, they, they were driving and they ended up at the Waffle Hut. Uh, Lou just, I don't know if his instincts took him there or if he decided to go there, but he, they end up there. And he's looking at everything. Um, the wife and Molly are outside making a snowman. And, like, Molly runs off to get some sticks for the snowman. And she finds like this, it looked like maybe a pop balloon. It was like, get well soon. Uh, 
kind of looked like a pop balloon. It was shiny. I don't know what it was. But then the wife finds a gun in the bushes, like buried underneath snow. So they're, you know, figuring out more and more about the case. And then, as far as Kristen Dunst and her husband, um, they're, you know, they're freaking out because they're just, like I said, I'm assuming couple who don't really know what to do with this situation, uh, just making stupid decision after stupid decision. Uh, they decide that Kristen Dunst is going to go into work because if neither of them show up, people are going to ask questions. Um, small town, so everybody knows about everything. Um, but they they do have to try to figure out how to explain uh, her eye because in the fight, like Ed had kind of swung an arm back um, when she was I I don't know if she was trying to help her, it, kind of a blur. So he had swung back and hit her in the, uh, the eye, so she has a bruise, and you know, they're freaking out about that. They're freaking out about the body. Um, Ed decides he's going to stay home and clean, so they're freaking out about a bunch of stuff. And uh, sure enough, you know, she goes into work. She's a hair cutter uh, at a barber shop, and uh, you know, she also shows up at the meat shop where Ed works and tells him that you know, he's staying home, not feeling well, something he ate last night. So they're trying to keep up appearances, but they're not doing a great job. Um, so she has a normal day at work, I guess. Uh, one of the ladies, is, I think she's on to her. Either that or she's like, I don't know. It seemed like she was hitting her. It was weird. Um, but it seems like she knows that something's up. That it's not just, every, it's not everything's good like she's trying to make it out to be. Um, and Ed uh, goes late takes the body with him of the, the younger son and uh, takes it to the meat shop to grind it and I really hope this isn't going to turn into one of those you know Barbara of Seville <sighs> creepy thinking about a human sandwiches so anyway he's in there grinding it up and uh, Lou pulls up sees the light and, and the back on and sees Ed's truck and so decides to you know, knock and uh, get some bacon for Molly. So, goes in. Ed's not doing a great job of acting like everything's okay. Uh, when he heard the knock, he went. He was going to chop off the hand, but the knock like surprised him. Chops off the fingers. One of the fingers rolls into the the main area, and so of course with Lou in there, like he's going to pay for it. And Ed notices a finger on the on the floor right there. And he drops a quarter. So of course Ed throws himself in the way of the finger, like so he can't see it. Answers the phone. It's his wife. Asks her where he is, and somehow manages to get through that whole <laughs> encounter without getting caught, um, which is very much Fargo, uh, mainly from the first season. Just, I mean, Martin Freeman's character the whole time is like, how is he not getting caught? <laughs> so, you know. It's very interesting. Um, I'm very interested to see where it's going in the future. It does take a few episodes, though, before it really grips your attention and you're like, oh, I can't wait to see what happens next. But, you know, it's it's setting up story, which I really like. Um, and I, I am very curious to see what they do with this second season. So uh, I think that's it for Fargo, season two, episodes one and two. Um, so... I'll see you guys in the next review.